Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. I got some cool Saturn shots and something else very interesting that I didn't realize until I got into the editor today. Um, anyhow, we started out shooting the moon before dark. Um, this is a shot from later in the night, right before the sky began to close. Um, the sky closed in just a matter of minutes, from perfectly clear to can't even see a moon this size. Um, pretty crazy. Anyhow, we're going to start out with this really weird thing that happened. Um, in the lower right, you're going to see what appears to be party balloons come into frame. But there's actually more to this than meets the eye. Um, typically, you know, when I see something like this go by, this is with the telephoto camera, and I had the scope in full spectrum on this. Now, as these balloons clear the left edge of the moon, pay attention to see if you see anything spray out of those balloons. Um, and by the way, um, using the telescope, these balloons were almost perfectly in focus, slightly off, which means they were, I don't know, three to five miles away. And while I'm not shooting straight up, I am shooting very, very high off the horizon. So let's load the full spec. It's going to be in the lower left corner. Pay attention to what comes out of the balloon right there. Now we're going to take a couple views of this, but first I'll track the balloon for a second so that you can just kind of see what I was seeing. So you can see here it's not in perfect focus but it's darn close and so I'm screwing around with it now it's way out of focus because um, I went the wrong way but you'll see me go the other way and pull it kind of back into you know pretty good focus. It appears to be three metallic party balloons but there's no string visible. Um, the wind is coming out of the west now watch in the lower left watch as this balloon outgasses and this is a locked shot by the way so this cannot be um, right there. This cannot be lens flare because the uh, the camera does not move in the original shot um, until after I seed this thing. So watch right here some stuff comes out but what's funny is whatever comes out goes against the wind. Uh, the wind is blowing to the west where the where this balloon is traveling so it's just kind of a strange thing and I followed it for long enough to see that none of the balloons deflated um, and here is the visual spectrum to show and it's not as close a shot but in visual I can't see anything come out though to be fair it's not nearly as magnified with the telephoto lens but that's just to show um, so very strange thing there um, whatever it was that sprayed out went against the wind and then dispersed um, so here we are late in the night as the sky is beginning to close very very quickly um, I can't see the planets anymore. Um, all I can see is the moon, and I've got the ISO jacked so far up that it's all grainy like this. But I wanted to get some close-in shots of the moon with a 9mm eyepiece using eyepiece projection. So we'll take a quick look at this, then we're going to load the Saturn shots, and it was a pretty good night to, to catch the illusory Saturn. Anyhow, we'll run just a, a couple couple more seconds here of uh, close up on the moon and you can see the grainier it gets uh, what I'm doing is jacking the ISO and aperture up to peer through the cloud cover that's beginning to cover the moon I should have uh, I wish I would have swung over on the moon earlier before we got all this interference and actually I just came in from shooting chem planes outside they're hard at it shooting low altitude persistent miles long trails uh, in the company of very high altitude, probably 40,000 feet or higher planes, spraying non-persistent trails. And it is my assertion that they mix what they are spraying. Okay, so here is a star in Libra, I believe. Watch in the upper right as I acquire Saturn in full, in full spectrum. IR visible and UV all at once. So you're going to see that star begin to move, and then in the upper right corner there's Saturn coming into view. Now right now I don't have Saturn tuned in uh, and so what I do is I click off a still. I set auto real quick and I click off a still to see what the quality of the scene will be for the night and I examine the still. This is blurry because I just clicked it off without a trigger um, but it shows me that it's going to be a pretty good night for viewing Saturn. Best night that I've had in a long long time and since Saturn is we are told as close as it will be and the rings are tilted open um, more than I've seen them and I don't even know how long. So here is an overexposed shot and what I do is I always overexpose to see if I can see moons 
and I'll, I'll fix the there I focused a little bit and then I'm gonna hit brightness um, I think we can see one two three four five way up in the upper right there's a sixth moon um, I think you can see six moons here uh, two of them are very close to the upper right rings and again we have this kind of glow and people say chromatic aberration but the telescope I have is the whole thing about it is it's supposed to be chromatic aberration free all the way to the edge of the, the field of view so here is with zero magnification just using the visible spectrum camera what our eyes see using the telescope as basically a telephoto lens um, this is with zero magnification and what I'm going to do is go up through 26 millimeters up to 12 millimeters and then finally to maximum magnification at 9 millimeters in both spectrums and unfortunately invisible invis visual spectrum uh, the clouds cut me off but I got it in everything else so pretty good night for viewing Saturn on a whole um, you'll be able to tell as uh, as the seeing starts to dissolve and in the time it took me to switch take the camera apart, put the new eyepiece in, put it back on the camera is the amount of time the visibility went away. This is with the IR UV visible spectrum full spectrum camera with no magnification using the Canon camera uh, putting the Canon camera on the telescope to use the telescope as a telephoto lens. So that's a pretty good shot. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. Oh, I'm sorry, I did a brightness correction. So there's a little bit of brightness to try to bring up the rings. And you can see the top ring is over, supposed to be over what we're told is a planet. And uh, the bottom ring is behind what we're told is supposed to be a planet. Okay, here we have the 26 millimeter eyepiece in visual spectrum, what our eyes see. So I have stepped it up so that we have a little bit of magnification. This is editing zoom. <clears throat> and you got to realize, guys, that I am absolutely polluted with city light and uh, the seeing is never very good around here. So getting a night like this is pretty good. Um, if I was out in the desert somewhere, these would be razor sharp, crisp images, um, providing that the seeing is decent and uh, there's no cloud cover. All right, that was with the 26 in visual spectrum. Now we're going to load 26 in full spectrum. And again, you can really see um, how the ring is supposed to be going behind the planetary disk on the bottom there. You can even see the separation of the rings at either edge. Um, it's not every night that you can see that well. This is all editing zoom. And then I'm going to load the 12 millimeter, or no, I think the 9 millimeter shot. So this is with the vis visual spectrum where I have been forced to crank aperture and ISO because there is so much clouds covering the sky. So I'm basically shooting through clouds and visual spectrum by just simply manipulating ISO and aperture to collect light. Terrible shot. But I did manage to get this next shot with the full spectrum camera with the 9mm high magnification before that all happened. So this is probably the best view of the night. And this is editing zoom. So there it is. A lot of views of Saturn and whatever the heck those balloons are. I mean, I'm tempted to say they were party balloons, but the fact is, is they're outgassing something that can only be seen in full spectrum filming and it is being sprayed against the prevailing wind that is pushing the balloon and it cannot possibly be lens flare because it is a locked shot anyhow I'm going out to shoot chem planes um, they're coming hard and heavy so you know I'm sure my sky is going to close in the next couple hours here there it is stay tuned cheers <laughs>